Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to configure Homebridge on a Raspberry Pi 3 model B+. Homebridge is a lightweight Node.js server that emulates a HomeKit accessory on your network. And uh, what it does is it will take uh, accessories that are not certified to work with Apple's HomeKit ecosystem and it will make the phone think that it is compatible. So you'll be able to uh, natively interact with it just like you would any other device that is certified to work with the home app for the iPhone. The home app on the iPhone allows you to uh, set up automations, uh, control uh, your accessories with your uh, voice using Siri, and it lets you uh, access all of your uh, devices right from your uh, control center. Uh, the downside to HomeKit is it doesn't have as many uh, supported accessories as Google and Amazon does and this is where Homebridge comes in and fills that gap. Uh, so if you uh, you know, have a lot of devices and you want to set up something like this, uh, this is a very helpful plugin. So I'm going to start off with an unboxing and then I'm going to move on to a tutorial on how to set this kind of thing up. Um, I picked up a Raspberry Pi 3 model B plus uh, basic kit uh, made by Canakit from Micro Center. Uh, this is about $55. Um, I also picked up a uh, SanDisk Extreme Plus uh, micro SD card. Uh, you can use pretty much uh, any micro SD card over 16 gigs. Uh, it's not a very uh, um, power heavy system. Anything will pretty much work with it. Uh, let me start by uh, just unboxing the Model Pi 3. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, you're going to get yourself the packaging uh, with just the board on the inside of it. Uh, nothing else usually. And also inside of here you're going to see a kind of booklet with some uh, safety instructions and a quick start guide. Uh, on top of that you're going to get a Uh, these are heat sinks, so you could put them on top of the chips on the Raspberry Pi and it will help dissipate the heat a little bit better and make them uh, more reliable and a little more stable. Uh, in here you we have a acrylic clear case. And with this we can uh, put the Pi in there, protect the components a little bit better, uh, make sure it's properly grounded and a little bit more uh, safe from dust and, and things like that. And here we're going to have a 2.5 amp uh, power adapter. And uh, it just has a micro USB connector on one end and a uh, standard US wall out on the other. It looks like it has uh, some kind of changeable tip for international travel. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to configure Homebridge on the Raspberry Pi uh, using a Mac OS computer. So first you're going to open your browser and we're going to visit hoobs.org hoobs stands for the home bridge out of box system with this web website uh, it has a pre-installed um, image of the Raspberry operating system in addition to that home bridge is going to be pre-configured with a pre-installed user interface and it's going to be pre-configured for auto start on boot and reboot. When we get to the website, we're going to choose the download the latest version option. This is going to redirect us to a download link on their wetransfer.com page. So we will select download. It's going to download a uh, image file, which we can then flash to the SD card. Uh, with a uh, program that's capable of doing so. Now that the image file has downloaded, we could proceed back to their website where we can get uh, further instructions on how to proceed. We're going to go over to the installation guide where it's providing us with instructions to download a tool to flash the image to the SD card called Belena Etcher. We're going to select that and download it, and then we're going to press the download link. We'll give that a run through. Okay, so we're going to open that. 
And what this program is going to do is it's going to prompt us to install it in our applications folder. Then we're going to launch the program. Select the image file that we downloaded earlier. We're going to open that. It's going to detect the SD card that you've already mounted on your computer. If you haven't done so already, insert your SD card. And then press the flash button. It's going to prompt you for your login credentials. So enter your password now. And it's going to start flashing the image. Okay, now that the flashing has completed, the drive has automatically unmounted and it's ready for installation in the Raspberry Pi. So now that you've successfully flashed your Raspberry Pi uh, image to the SD card, we're going to insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and then we're going to connect it to power and ethernet. From there, we're going to move on to the computer and then we're going to uh, open up your browser and from here you're going to go to the address bar and type in hoobs.local. This is going to find the Raspberry Pi in your network and it's going to bring you into the login page. From here you're going to type in the default username and password which are admin in both fields. You're going to press login. When we get to this screen it's going to show us the current version of the Homebridge software that's installed. It's going to show you uh, which services are currently running, the uptime of your Raspberry Pi, current CPU load, and current memory usage. On the left side of your screen you're going to see the Homebridge uh, setup code for the Home app on the iPhone. You're going to be scanning this code in order to uh, sync up the Homebridge uh, accessory with the uh, iPhone app. So to start off, we're going to press the upgrade button on Homebridge. This is going to uh, bring up a uh, log with the commands being entered by the system to perform the update. And it's going to fe fetch the uh, newest software from the uh, server. Okay, Homebridge is going to restart. The next thing we could do is we could visit the plugin screen, and we could also run the updates on those too. So, this is the configuration UI plugin. Now that's done, it's showing a, a list of changes. Uh, that were included with that last update. Now we're going to close this and we also see that there is a dummy switch included uh, with Homebridge for demonstration purposes. I'm also going to update that because I'm going to be using that to show you guys uh, how to configure an accessory. Okay, it looks like the updates have completed on that end. So next we're going to move on to the configuration screen. I'm going to show you around the home app for iOS. Here we're going to see a list of all the accessories that have already been set up. Everything on this page is natively supported by HomeKit already and is not uh, created by the HomeBridge uh, server. So to add the HomeBridge server, we are going to navigate to the status page where we're going to see the QR code we can scan. We're going to select the plus button, we're going to go to add accessories, and then we're going to point it at the QR code. It's letting us know that the uh, accessory that we're trying to add is uncertified. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add it anyway because we uh, understand that there are risks involved here and uh, we are willing to take those risks. Okay, so it's giving me a confirmation that the Homebridge accessory was added successfully. We're just going to uh, hit next until we can see it. 
and it looks like it's showing up over here under my uh, default room. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Mac, and we're going to modify that config page using the uh, text that's on the dummy switches plugin uh, readme page. So we'll go ahead and we'll replace the accessories area with that. Okay, and it's showing that we do have uh, an error message and let's put that comma back in. We're gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, and then we're gonna go and restart the Homebridge uh, uh, server. Okay, so uh, as we can see on the iPhone, the uh, dummy switch has been added and it is functional as far as we can tell. Let's go ahead and add an automation which takes advantage of this switch. So we're going to go here and press the plus button and we're going to select uh, when an accessory is controlled. What we could do with this is we can uh, choose that new switch and we can set it so that when it turns on it will shut off uh, one of my other accessories. So let's grab the lamps and then uh, we'll set it so that the lamps turn off whenever that switch turns on. We're going to go back to rooms and let's uh, grab that switch and uh, put it on the same page as the uh, as a lamp. Let's go back to that page and uh, let's just go ahead and toggle that switch. As we can see, yep, the switch turned on and then the lamps turned off. Let's do that one more time. So turn the lamp on Power on, and then lamps off. Okay, automation is working. The accessory has been added to the home app, and uh, that concludes our video.